it's so nice to be here with you in uh, beautiful Verona, Italy. So ciao tutti. <laughs> and uh, I will talk today about building uh, React applic application, obviously. Uh, we start components and uh, Flexbox, CSS Flexbox. And I have first question for you. So do you like writing CSS? That's not enough hands in the air, you know? You should enjoy it, come on. We love CSS, it's so amazing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so my name is Kasia Strzemska, it's pretty hard to pronounce, it's Paul, I'm from Poland. Uh, I'm front end developer at 24 Easter, which is not from Poland, <laughs> but that doesn't matter. And uh, here's me on the horse. I love horse riding, and I really uh, recommend you to do something uh, besides coding sometimes. Uh, oh, so let's go further. I don't have this clicker, so I will just do the, uh, the pauses. So let's go to our, uh, my uh, uh, presentation. We'll uh, go through a few sections. So first of all, let's uh, talk a little while about how it works right now. What are the options? Uh, uh, then we will move, of course, to style components, what uh, they bring to the table, and then, uh, of course, how to make your life easier with Flexbox. And let's build it. So we have plenty to do. Let's go. So how it works right now? As I said, we have plenty of options. There is, uh, of course, uh, preprocessor, preprocessors like SLES or SAS. Uh, there are bootstraps, uh, UI kits, li huge libraries to use classes, which works pretty cool with React. But you have to be you have to you have to be 100 percent sure of what you want to use in your application because what how I found found myself when I started using UI kit is that okay this is cool this is funny I can uh, like add many classes to my uh, components but occasionally I have to change something and it end up it ends up with UI kit mixed with some CSS with some inline CSS, sorry, <laughs> and yeah, it's a mess. So do it on your own risk, always. Uh, there are CS CSS modules, which uh, solves a lot of problems when it comes to CSS and how uh, it works with React, because there is like a little bit problem when, uh, when you want to connect how CSS works uh, on in native CSS and the composable uh, applications like React. So CSS modules hel helps a lot to, to build the local uh, styles, uh, which solves uh, problems with overriding uh, code, but we'll talk about it later. And the last but not least option is, of course, using the hipsterish CSS. So yeah, the native one. Let's, use, let's do this. <laughs> uh, OK, so during my work, I started few problems with uh, CSS, writing CSS, and you probably already know some of them. You just work with, uh, with it on a daily basis. And this is probably why you haven't raised your hand when I asked if you love CSS or like. <laughs> uh, but obviously, uh, there's, there are many problems. So uh, I spotted that the common problem, the GIF is working, work. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, the common problem is, of course, redundancy. We just repeat ourselves so much in CSS, so many times. We just write some styles for, for button, and then we, we forgot and write, the, write, write those styles once again in some nested uh, another section of our application. And uh, yeah, this is like a huge problem because the CSS grows really fast. And uh, another problem, of course, is overriding CSS. So it's connected, right? Because, well, we decided that we will create this class. Let's name it active, right? OK, then we have some class active for the button or something. And the active has um, a specified color. And then we move on. We forget. <laughs> and we want to do the active class again, this time for link. And yeah, 
raise your hand maybe one time or if you if you just maybe one time used import important to fix some bugs <laughs> yeah shame on you <laughs> and on me of course <laughs> yeah but it happens yes it happens oh it happens also if you use some bootstrap or UI kit or stuff like that so yeah we use something and then uh, I have to have to work this has to work another way so important and uh, another problem and this is more this is more related to react uh, directly is uh, how we used to think about separation of concerns so in uh, in applications uh, a few years ago the, the separation of concerns looked looked like that so we uh, had HTML we had jQuery and then <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then we had CSS uh, this is how it looked uh, we were happy with that I was happy with that because life was easier but uh, then we moved to react and our separation of concerns changed because as you can see we have components and we want we want we uh, desire components which are reusable as Elena said and to have reuse, fully reusable components, we, have, we actually have to close our full, fully working component into, if it, if it can be done, one file. So we have JS, JSX, and styled component, <laughs> maybe, or CSS, just say CSS. Okay, so how we usually uh, how we usually react of, on those problems in our code base so usually we just sit and sit and actually think oh it's okay I will use another important <laughs> maybe I will add less less sorry or sus or less, sus less something like that well it should work so I have another option for you <laughs> and those are styled components of course some of you probably use styled components because styled components are not that young uh, the the styled component uh, repo is over uh, is uh, more than a year uh, old so raise your hand again well, who tried styled components oh plenty of you that's cool that's good that means that the uh, actually the lib is really good and uh, it works um, so what are styled components uh, or maybe what are they not because I've heard <laughs> I've heard many uh, many um, different opinions about uh, styled components and CSS in JS in general and I would like to call them myths because there are myths this is like uh, I've never tried styled components it's some kind of CSS in JS B word. Uh, so uh, let's try to play a game <laughs> and be a bluff, um, uh, myth busters. Yes, yeah, styled component myth busters. So the first one, the first uh, myth about styled component is uh, styled components library, which is really cool, is that is an arrow inline styles. And do you think that it's a true or a myth? No, come on. <laughs> okay, so it's not true. It's not true. It's totally not true. I should do the stamp busted or something like that. Sorry, I might uh, blame on me here, but styled components are definitely not inline styles. They're uh, generated into CSS, which is uh, actually applied to the head of document on the runtime. So this is not some styles which is applied to the HTML tag never 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 so let's go to the another myth uh, you don't have to know CSS to write styled components <laughs> so <laughs> again is this true or not <laughs> of course it's false come on guys you have to know CSS we are front-end developers come on <laughs> so we have to know CSS are uh, maybe part of <laughs> but uh, it's good to know CSS if you want to avoid a lot of uh, problems uh, 
in the end, uh, but we'll talk about it later on. So the, so the third uh, myth I took uh, uh, to consider is that it's slow. So do you think it's true or false? Actually, it may be true. <laughs> but what can I say? Styled components, it's not a native CSS like just uh, r static CSS, which is already there. It works. It's, it's compiled by Java, I mean compiled by JavaScript. So uh, of course it's slower, but it's not only about uh, how it works in the runtime. It's all about the developer experience. So how we write the code, how we use, reuse the code, and how we can think about architecture with CSS. Because do you think about architecture when it comes to CSS? Usually it's more like, OK, I need another styles for this, and da, da, da. It's written. So yeah. When it comes to styled components, it's different. But you have to change the way of thinking. Because this is not the old, uh, old known CSS written in one or a few files, or even if uh, we used uh, two CSS modules that we have a separated uh, CSS for per components, but still written in the separated file. It's CSS, which is actually in JavaScript file or JSX file. <coughs> so it's different. And uh, let me show you a sample. So for those of you who never seen styled components, and for of course for those who seen that and using that, uh, this is a really simple sample of button. And as you can see, the styled component, uh, styled components uh, library comes with the really cool, um, I would say, API to create the button, just apply some uh, some really nice styles, which is simple and obvious. And then with this uh, created by styled components primitive, we are ready to use our uh, beautiful button. <laughs> and uh, with, uh, with what comes uh, styled components into our code base? Of course, it comes with the power of JavaScript. So we can easily apply properties, props, of course, to our um, button. So if there is a color, we apply our col color to CSS. Uh, it's, uh, more co it can be more complicated, of course, because we can uh, uh, we can, of course, uh, do more with, uh, with just uh, this section because we can, uh, for example, write some, uh, uh, some if statements. Uh, so put some CSS if there is a property or put some CSS if the property has some kind of value. So there is uh, plenty to do with styled components. Another thing is, of course, what styled components come uh, with what styled components comes. Uh, uh, to you, so we we can create the primitives, but we can also style existing components. So it's with this, it's pretty easy to introduce styled components into existing code base. So we don't have to resign uh, like uh, like in the first step on what we have. We can uh, introduce styled compon components into our code base incrementally, incrementally, <gasps> and. <laughs> and move on to the styled components week by week slowly. Uh, another thing is, of course, extend. So when we have styled com uh, component, our, our uh, styled component already, we can simply extend our button with some more styles. OK, so that's all great. but. Can you just move on to the building our app or something, or just do some more coding? Uh, no. <laughs> no, because we have to think, uh, talk about Flexbox. And uh, Flexbox is even older than styled components. And why I'm actually talking about Flexbox? Because when I'm taking a look on uh, Stack Overflow, uh, and uh, I like to be active there, I see like 
um, numerous, uh, plenty of questions about Flexbox, how it works, how, uh, how we, what we can do with it. And of course, the answer, uh, or if there is any CSS related question, there is something about Flexbox, I always think about this tweet. So yeah, let's throw some Flexbox into the issue. <laughs> and this is what I do. This is what I do in this presentation. I will throw some Flexbox and uh, just for, uh, for those of you who maybe never tried Flexbox, I hope that most of you ever tried, I will not ask, <laughs> or maybe I do. Flexbox, are you familiar with? Most of. So I would probably s could switch a uh, few of uh, the slides now, but let's just go, let's just move on with this. So as you probably know how it works uh, with display block, we have just uh, one after another, and then comes flex, then comes flex, which uh, of course uh, by default give us flex direction row, and our, our uh, inside children components are just uh, magically uh, in the row. Uh, of course, it's not like we want it, right? Because one of them is just outside of the container. I mean, it's, uh, oh, the overflow is uh, not working here like, like we want it. But of course, it's uh, really easy to fix. We just uh, set up the flex wrap for our uh, container to uh, actually tell our container how, she, how it should handle the, the wrapping our components inside. So if we want to wrap them, we wrap them. We can uh, actually do the inverse wrapping. We can, uh, we can say uh, to container to, to do not wrap anything at all. But usually uh, when it comes to grids, it's good to wrap. <laughs> OK, so uh, another thing is just a quick uh, reminder how to do this. It's uh, align items, which is, uh, which is working on the on the uh, second axis of our uh, flex. And we have plenty of options as, again, so we can just align our, uh, align our uh, elements uh, to, the, to the given uh, um, position, to the start, the center, to the top, to bottom. Two uh, another things are pretty uh, interesting, which uh, we maybe not use uh, that much, is that we can stretch our elements if they have no set uh, height. height. <laughs> uh, we can uh, align them to the base baseline of text. So that's cool. With flex, this is something more than we used to do uh, with uh, our grids. And then there's also justify content, which is maybe even more important than align items and works on the main axis of our flex. And uh, of course, uh, it also align items, but just to the start, to the end, or center them, or can uh, even uh, decide. We can even decide how we want to space uh, our items. If we want to uh, just put it to the center and space around, or we want to space them evenly, so the spacing will be uh, always the same, uh, and it's recounted by Flexbox, so that's cool or we can uh, do the space between, uh, which is just uh, pushing our elements to the, to the, to the barriers. <laughs> OK, so now we can actually start. Uh, we can actually start building our uh, pretty simple and basic uh, system for grid elements with Flexbox. So let's do this. Our base component is uh, an item. So an item is a div uh, in my example. Of course, it can be uh, any HTML element. And here comes uh, uh, also uh, to the rescue, here comes uh, the version 2 uh, styled components uh, um, API, which uh, now uh, makes, makes, it, makes it possible to change the tag of uh, the HTML tag of, co of styled component if we want to. So this is a kind of hack, but still possible. So we have a style div, which is, uh, has a box sizing set uh, just up front. And if you know uh, what is the problem with box sizing, uh, you probably know what, how, why I did it. 
because we don't want to uh, actually think about how paddings or margins or stuff like that uh, are, are recounted. We want to be sure that the width uh, of our components are always uh, uh, took to the, uh, to the consider by flex. So uh, then we just uh, simply pass some properties, some component properties to our CSS, and this is a flex. Uh, flex, uh, this is something I didn't mention before. So this is a size which uh, our component will take uh, when it comes to the, uh, to the, uh, the container. So if the flex is one, it should take the, just the size uh, the, the, or the uh, fixed size of the, the biggest size possible. Then if the size is, uh, if there is more than one component, so this, let's imagine that there are, for example, two components and uh, one of them is, has size one and another has a size, for example, three, is just, uh, so uh, we have just four parts, four parts of the container and first of uh, them takes one third, one fourth of the container, and the second one takes the three fourth uh, of the container. So this is how it works uh, in general. Uh, there is another thing. This is order, and this is really uh, nice that Flex uh, supports the order, so we can just uh, reorder our uh, components in the container. And there is, of course, uh, width, so we can just uh, set the fixed width uh, to the, our item. Uh, we uh, also define the prop, ty proper prop types for our component, which makes it more easy uh, to reuse those components. This is uh, obvious. And then there is a container. And uh, what's uh, actually funny that is that the container styles the item with a few uh, additional styles. So there is a display flex, which is really important. There is, and there is also a properties which, is, which takes the container, like wrap, how we want to wrap our elements, how we want to uh, direct them in the row or in the column, how we want to justify content, and how we want to align items. So how would we use them? And here comes the JS6 of our page with the components we created before. So as you can see, we have a container with a uh, few set uh, properties and then we have items of course it can be done better it can be done by a facade so we have a main container which uh, implements the given options and then we just use the main container which is clean <laughs> and items inside and let's go to the conclusions <laughs> So uh, Flexbox is powerful. As you probably already know, we use it. We throw the Flexbox on any issues. Uh, style components are not that scary, as you've probably seen. And you have to still know CSS and learn CSS to use them. And it can be fun. Thank you very much.